Light, nimble and extrovert, the Nissan Duke was the original small Super Mini derived crossover model, combining attitude, irreverence, modish style and energy with a mischievous sense of fun. Since its original launch, plenty of would-be rivals have attempted to copy its concept, prompting Nissan to introduce this second-generation model to try and ensure continued segment leadership. As before, the result certainly won't please everyone, but then that's because it isn't supposed to. It's aimed at the young and the young at heart, many of whom will continue to love this car and admire its designers having the courage to do something different. Very different. A decade ago, when we first tried the original Duke, we likened it to a kind of shrunken SUV sports car in super springy trainers. Now, in some ways, uh, not too much has changed with this second generation model, uh, which has a handling CV enhanced with a stiffer, more sophisticated CMFB platform, more responsive steering and active trace control torque vectoring for extra traction through the turns. All of which explains why this Nissan is more rewarding to drive than most of its B-segment small SUV rivals. The brand has had to adopt a pretty stiff suspension setup to make it all work though. Uh, too stiff you might feel if you've opted for the big 19-inch wheels that come fitted to the top Tecna models. Uh, with the 16 or 17-inch rims of the lesser variants though, the damping balance offers a more bearable compromise and that's helped by smaller secondary springs housed within the dampers to cushion rebound strokes as you drive over the bumps and by standard active ride control, which immediately after you've hit a pothole or a tarmac tear, gently applies brake pad to brake disc, uh, usually at the rear, so as to ease back body pitch and keep the car more stable. Now from launch, there was only one engine option, a three cylinder, one litre DIGT petrol turbo unit with 117 PS, but you do get the option of a rather jerky seven speed paddle shift automatic gearbox as an alternative to the standard six speed manual. Plusher variants get a set of Demo drive settings and WLTP rated efficiency is very class competitive. The manual model manages 47.9 mpg and 135 grams per kilometre of CO2. Yes, the Duke does still look like either something dredged up from the abyssal depths of the ocean or a fun, friendly little runabout that's rather futuristic. It all depends on your perspective. Whichever camp you're in, you have to hand it to Nissan for not losing its resolve here. It would have been so easy for them to water this design down so as to reach a wider audience. But as it is, buyers of the original model will immediately recognize this second generation version with its exaggerated wheel arches, its rising window line, its strong shoulders and its squat rear end. All of which artfully disguised as a slight size increase over what we had before. It's 29 millimeters wider and 75 mils longer. But will it be just as interesting inside? Well, pretty much, yes. Uh, a few of the motorcycle style touches of the original model are gone, but the cabin's now of much higher quality and it's potentially just as personalizable as before, particularly if you specify all the optional bright trimming that we have here. Uh, the sporty looking monoform seats with their integrated headrests position you a little higher up than in some direct rivals. And the steering wheel now at last adjusts for reach as well as brake. Uh, through it, you view a couple of clear analog gauges separated by a good sized screen. Anything that this can't tell you will be covered off by this center dash eight inch Nissan Connect display, which is standard providing you avoid entry level trim. And it's equipped with plenty Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring, plus uh, voice control, Nissan Connect live information services, and a rear view camera. Uh, frontward vision is good, rearward visibility is less so, and there's a reasonable amount of cabin storage too. Right, let's take a look out back. Now the rear doors, like those in a Toyota CHR, are accessed via these high set handles. Now Nissan talks of an extra 58 millimeters of legroom back here this time around, and that's enough in this case to make the difference between what previously felt very much like a kids only space and one that now feels like it could take a couple of adults for short to medium length journeys without upsetting them too much. 
Younger folk will be pleased to find a USB port pack here uh, near this central cubby. And the central transmission tunnel isn't too high, so if you really do have to squeeze in a third person, that ought to be possible without the central occupant here needing a trip to the osteopath afterwards. Let's finish with a look at the boot. Uh, the 422 litre capacity is 20% greater than what was on offer before. You get this standard adjustable height floor, which in its lowest setting will allow you to carry some uh, quite tall items. Um, if you need more room, you can push down the 60-40 split rear bench to free up 1,305 litres of capacity across a completely flat load area if you have the adjustable height floor in its higher position. The Duke was always a clever idea, launched by Nissan to offer SUV-like style for the small car sector without any SUV-like compromises. Precisely the same trick that the company's bigger Qashqai crossover had already pulled off in targeting larger family-sized models in the market segment above. There's no point, though, in starting a trend if you're not prepared to develop it. And in the face of increasing competition, this car needed to evolve. It has. If you liked the Duke before, you'll love it even more now. If though it was a little extrovert for you in its original form, it still won't be to your taste. And you'll probably want something similar that's a little more restrained, maybe say a Peugeot 2008 or perhaps a Volkswagen T-Cross. A Duke is different, very different in fact, if you choose all the trendy personalization options that are now on offer. Not everyone will agree, but one thing's absolutely for sure. This is an original in every sense.